Exodus 36 The Lord has gifted Bezalel, Oholiab, and the other skilled craftsmen with wisdom and ability to perform any task involved in building the sanctuary. Let them construct and furnish the tabernacle just as the Lord has commanded. So Mo Moses summoned Bezalel and Oholiab and all the others who were specifically gifted by the Lord and were eager to get to work. Moses gave them the materials donated by the people of Israel as sacred offerings for the completion of the sanctuary. But the people continued to bring additional gifts each morning. Finally, the craftsmen who were working on the sanctuary left their work. They went to Moses and reported, The people have given more than enough materials to complete the job the Lord has commanded us to do. So Moses gave the command, and this message was sent throughout the camp. Men and women, don't prepare any more gifts for the sanctuary. We have enough. So the people stopped bringing their sacred offerings. Their contributions were more than enough to complete the whole project. The skilled craftsmen made ten curtains of finely woven linen for the tabernacle. Then Bezalel decorated the curtains with blue, purple, and scarlet thread and with skillfully embroidered cherubim. All ten curtains were exactly the same size, 42 feet long and 6 feet wide. Five of these curtains were joined together to make one long curtain, and the other five were joined to make a second long curtain. He made fifty loops of blue yarn and put them along the edge of the last curtain in each set. The fifty loops along the edge of one curtain matched the fifty loops along the edge of the other curtain. Then he made fifty gold clasps and fastened the long curtains together with the clasp. In this way, the tabernacle was made of one continuous piece. He made eleven curtains of goat hair cloth to serve as a tent covering for the tabernacle. These eleven curtains were all exactly the same size, forty-five feet long and six feet wide. Bezalel joined five of these curtains together to make one long curtain, and the other six were joined to make a second long curtain. He made fifty loops for the edge of each large curtain. He also made fifty bronze clasps to fasten the long curtains together. In this way, the tent covering was made of one continuous piece. He completed the tent covering with a layer of tanned ram skins and a layer of fine goatskin leather. For the framework of the tabernacle, Bezalel constructed frames of acacia wood. Each frame was 15 feet high and 27 inches wide, with two pegs under each frame. All the frames were identical. He made 20 of these frames to support the curtains on the south side of the tabernacle. He also made 40 silver bases, two bases under each frame, with the pegs fitting securely into the bases. For the north side of the tabernacle, he made another 20 frames, with their 40 silver bases, two bases under each frame. He made six frames for the rear, the west side of the tabernacle, along with two additional frames to reinforce the rear corners of the tabernacle. These corner frames were matched at the bottom and firmly attached at the top with a single ring, forming a single corner unit. Both of these corner units were made the same way, so there were eight frames at the rear of the tabernacle, set in 16 silver bases, two bases under each frame. 
Then he made crossbars of acacia wood to link the frames, five crossbars for the north side of the tabernacle and five for the south side. He also made five crossbars for the rear of the tabernacle, which faced west. He made the middle crossbar to attach halfway up the frames. It ran all the way from one end of the tabernacle to the other. He overlaid the frames with gold and made gold rings to hold the crossbars. Then he overlaid the crossbars with gold as well. For the inside of the tabernacle, Bezalel made a special curtain of finely woven linen. He decorated it with blue, purple, and scarlet thread, and with skillfully embroidered cherubim. For the curtain, he made four posts of acacia wood and four gold hooks. He overlaid the posts with gold and set them in four silver bases. Then he made another curtain for the entrance to the sacred tent. He made it of finely woven linen and embroidered it with exquisite designs using blue, purple, and scarlet thread. This curtain was hung on gold hooks attached to five posts. The posts with their decorated tops and hooks were overlaid with gold and five bases were cast from bronze. Next, Bezalel made the Ark of Acacia Wood, a sacred chest 45 inches long, 27 inches wide, and 27 inches high. He overlaid it inside and outside with pure gold, and he ran a molding of gold all around it. He cast four gold rings and attached them to its four feet, two rings on each side. Then he made the poles from acacia wood and overlaid them with gold. He inserted the poles into the rings at the sides of the ark to carry it. Then he made the ark's cover, the place of atonement, from pure gold. It was 45 inches long and 27 inches wide. He made two cherubim from the hammered gold and placed them on the two ends of the atonement cover. He molded the cherubim on each of the atonement cover, each end of the atonement cover, making it all of one piece of gold. The cherubim faced each other and looked down on the atonement cover. With their wings spread above it, they protected it. Then Bezalel made the table of acacia wood, 36 inches long, 18 inches wide, and 27 inches high. He overlaid it with pure gold and ran a gold molding around the edge. He decorated it with, three inch, with a three-inch border all around, and he ran a gold molding along the border. Then he cast four gold rings for the table and attached them at the four corners next to the four legs. The rings were attached near the border to hold the poles that were used to carry the table. He made these poles from acacia wood and overlaid them with gold. Then he made special containers of pure gold for the table, bowls, ladles, jars, and pitchers to be used in pouring out liquid offerings. Then Bezalel made the lampstand of pure hammered gold. He made the entire lampstand and its decorations of one piece, the base, center stem, lamp cups, buds, and petals. This, the lampstand had six branches going out from the center stem, three on each side. Each of the six branches had three lamp cups shaped like almond blossoms, complete with buds and petals. The center stem of the lampstand was crafted with four lamp cups shaped like almond blossoms, complete with buds and petals. There was an almond bud beneath each pair of branches where the six branches extended from the center stem and made of one, all made of one piece. The almond buds and branches were all of one piece with the center stem and they were hammered from pure gold. 
He also made seven lamps for the lampstand, lamp snuffers, and trays all of pure gold. The entire lampstand, along with its accessories, was made from 75 pounds of pure gold. Then Bezalel made the incense altar of acacia wood. It was 18 inches square and 36 inches high, with horns at the corners carved from the same piece of wood as the altar itself. He overlaid the top sides and horns of the altar with pure gold, and he ran a gold molding around the entire altar. He made two gold rings and attached them on opposite sides of the altar below the gold molding to hold the carrying poles. He made the poles of acacia wood and overlaid them with gold. Then he made the sacred anointing oil and the fragrant incense using the techniques of a skilled incense maker. Exodus 38 Next, Bezalel used acacia wood to construct the square altar of burnt offering. It was seven and a half feet wide, seven and a half feet long, and four and a half feet high. He made horns for each of its four corners so that the horns and altar were all one piece. He overlaid the altar with bronze. Then he made all the altar utensils of bronze. The ash buckets, shovels, basins, meat forks, and fire pans. Next, he made a bronze grating and installed it halfway down the side of the altar, under the ledge. He cast four rings and attached them to the corners of the bronze grating to hold the carrying poles. He made the poles from acacia wood and overlaid them with bronze. He inserted the poles through the rings on the sides of the altar. The altar was hollow and was made from planks. Bezalel made the bronze wash basin and its bronze stand from bronze mirrors donated by the women who served at the entrance of the tabernacle. Then Bezalel made the courtyard, which was enclosed with curtains made of finely woven linen. On the south side of the curtains were 150 feet long. They were held up by 20 posts set securely in 20 bronze bases. He hung the curtains with silver hooks and rings. He made a similar set of curtains for the north side, 150 feet of curtains held up by 20 posts set securely in bronze bases. He hung the curtains with silver hook rings hooks and rings. The curtains on the west end of the courtyard were 75 feet long, hung with silver hooks and rings and supported by 10 posts set into 10 bases. The east end, the front, was also 75 feet long. The courtyard entrance was on the east end, flanked by two curtains. The curtain on the right side was 22 and a half feet long and was supported by three posts set into three bases. The curtain on the left side was also 22 and a half feet long and was supported by three posts set into three bases. All the curtains used in the courtyard were made of finely woven linen. Each post had a bronze base. All and all the hooks and rings were silver. The tops of the posts of the courtyard were overlaid with silver, and the rings to hold up the curtains were made of silver. He made the curtain for the entrance of the courtyard, or to the courtyard of finely woven linen, and he decorated it with beautiful embroidery in blue, purple, and scarlet thread. It was 30 feet long, and its height was seven and a half feet, just like the curtains of the courtyard walls. It was supported by four posts, each set securely in its own bronze base. The tops of the posts were overlaid with silver, and the hooks and rings were also made of silver. All the tent pegs used in the tabernacle and courtyard were made of bronze.
This is an inventory of the materials used in building the Tabernacle of the Covenant. The Levites compiled the figures as Moses directed, and Ethamar, son of Aaron, the priest, served as recorder. Bezalel, son of Uri, grandson of Hur, of the tribe of Judah, made everything just as the Lord had commanded Moses. He was assisted by Oholiab, son of Ahisamach, of the tribe of Dan, a craftsman expert at engraving, designing, and embroidering with blue, purple, and scarlet thread on fine linen cloth. The people brought special offerings of gold, totaling 2,193 pounds, as measured by the weight of the sanctuary shekel. This gold was used throughout the tabernacle. The whole community of Israel gave 7,545 pounds of silver, as measured by the weight of the sanctuary shekel. This silver came from the tax collected from each man registered in the census. The tax is one becca, which is half a shekel, based on the sanctuary shekel. The tax was collected from 603,550 men who had reached their 20th birthday. The hundred bases for the frames of the sanctuary walls and for the posts supporting the inner curtain requires 7,500 pounds of silver, about 75 pounds for each base. The remaining 45 pounds of silver was used to make the hooks and rings to overlap the tops of the posts. The people also brought a special offerings as special offerings, 5,310 pounds of bronze, which was used for casting the bases for the post at the entrance to the tabernacle, and for the bronze altar with its bronze grating, and all the altar utensils. Bronze was also used to make the bases for the posts that support the curtains around the courtyard. The bases for the curtain at the entrance of the courtyard and all the tent pegs for the tabernacle and the courtyard. Exodus 39 the craftsmen made beautiful sacred garments of blue, purple, and scarlet cloth, clothing for Aaron to wear while ministering in the holy place, just as the Lord had commanded Moses. Bezalel made the ephod of finely woven linen and embroidered it with gold and with blue, purple, and scarlet thread. He made gold thread by hammering out thin sheets of gold and cutting it into fine strands. With great skill and care, he worked it into the fine linen with the blue, purple, and scarlet thread. The ephod consisted of two pieces, front and back, joined at the shoulders with two shoulder pieces. The decorative sash was made of the same materials, finely woven linen embroidered with gold and with blue, purple, and scarlet thread, just as the Lord had commanded Moses. They mounted the two onyx stones in settings of gold filigree. The stones were engraved with the names of the tribes of Israel, just as a seal is engraved. He fastened these stones on the shoulder pieces of the ephod as a reminder that the priest represents the people of Israel. All this was done just as the Lord had commanded Moses. Bezalel made the chess piece with great skill and care. He made it to match the ephod using finely woven linen embroidered with gold and with blue, purple, and scarlet thread. He made the chess piece of a single piece of cloth folded to form a pouch nine inches square. They mounted four rows of gemstones on it. The first row contained a red carnelian, a pale green peridot, and an emerald. 
The second row contained a turquoise, a blue lapis lazuli, and a white moonstone. The third row contained an orange jacinth, an agate, and a purple amethyst. The fourth row contained a blue-green barrel, an onyx, and a green jasper. All these stones were set in gold filigree. Each stone represented one of the twelve sons of Israel, and the name of that tribe was engraved on it like a seal. To attach the chest piece to the ephod, they made braided cords of pure gold thread. They also made two settings of gold filigree and two gold rings and attached them to the top corners of the chest piece. They tied the two gold cords to the rings on the chest piece. They tied the other ends of the cords to the gold settings on the shoulder pieces of the ephod. Then they made two more gold rings and attached them to the inside edges of the chest piece next to the ephod. Then they made two more gold rings and attached them to the front of the ephod, below the shoulder pieces, just above the knot where the decorative sash was fastened to the ephod. They attached the bottom rings of the chest piece to the rings on the ephod with blue cords. In this way, the chest piece was held securely to the ephod above the decorative sash. All this was done just as the Lord had commanded Moses. Bezalel made the robe that is worn with the ephod from a single piece of blue woven cloth, with an opening for Aaron's head in the middle of it. The opening was reinforced with a woven collar so it would not tear. They made pomegranates of blue, purple, and scarlet yarn and attached them to the hem of the robe. They also made bells of pure gold and placed them between the pomegranates along the hem of the robe, with bells and pomegranates alternating all around the hem. This robe was to be worn whenever the priest ministered before the Lord, just as the Lord had commanded Moses. They made tunics for Aaron and his sons from fine linen cloth. The turban and the special head coverings were made of fine linen, and the undergarments were also made of finely woven linen. The sashes were made of finely woven linen and embroidered with blue, purple, and scarlet threads, just as the Lord had commanded Moses. Finally, they made the sacred medallion, the badge of holiness, of pure gold. They engraved it like a seal with these words, Holy to the Lord. They attached the medallion with a blue cord to Aaron's turban, just as the Lord had commanded Moses. And so, at last, the tabernacle was finished. The Israelites had done everything just as the Lord had commanded Moses, and they brought the entire tabernacle to Moses. The sacred tent, with all its furnishings, clasp, frames, crossbars, posts, and bases, the tent coverings of tanned ramskins and fine goatskin leather, the inner curtain to shield the ark, the ark of the covenant and its carrying poles, the ark's cover, the place of atonement, the table and all its utensils, the bread of the presence. The pure gold lampstand with its symmetrical lamp cups, all its accessories, and the olive oil for lighting. The gold altar, the anointing oil and fragrant incense, the curtain for the entrance of the sacred tent. The bronze altar, the bronze grating and its carrying poles and utensils, the wash basin with its stand, the curtains for the walls of the courtyard, the posts and their bases, the curtain for the entrance of the court to the courtyard, the ropes and tent pegs, all the furnishings to be used in worship at the tabernacle, 
the beautifully stitched garments for the priest to wear while ministering in the holy place, the sacred garments for Aaron the priest, and the garments for his sons to wear as they minister as priest. So the people of Israel followed all of the Lord's instructions to Moses. Then Moses inspected all their work. When he found it had been done just as the Lord had commanded him, he blessed them. Exodus 40 Then the Lord said to Moses, Set up the tabernacle on the first day of the new year. Place the Ark of the Covenant inside and install the inner curtain to enclose the Ark within the most holy place. Then bring in the table and arrange the utensils on it and bring in the lampstand and set up the lamps. Place the gold incense altar in front of the Ark of the Covenant. Then hang the curtain at the entrance of the tabernacle. Place the altar of burnt offering in front of the tabernacle entrance. Set the wash basin between the tabernacle and the altar and fill it with water. Then set up the courtyard around the outside of the tent and hang the curtain of the courtyard for the courtyard entrance. Take the anointing oil and anoint the tabernacle and all its furnishings to consecrate them and make them holy. Anoint the altar of burnt offering and its utensils to consecrate them. Then the altar will become absolutely holy. Next, anoint the wash basin and its stand to consecrate them. Present Aaron and his sons at the entrance of the tabernacle and wash them with water. Dress Aaron with the sacred garments and anoint him, consecrating him to serve me as a priest. Then present his sons and dress them in their tunics. Anoint them as you did their father, so they may also serve me as priest. With their anointing, Aaron's descendants are set Set apart for the priesthood forever, from generation to generation. Moses proceeded to do everything just as the Lord had commanded him. So the tabernacle was set up on the first day of the first month of the second year. Moses erected the tabernacle by setting down its bases, inserting the frames, attaching the crossbars, and setting up the post. Then he spread the coverings over the tabernacle framework and put on the protective layers just as the Lord had commanded him. He took the stone tablets inscribed with the terms of the covenant and placed them inside the ark. Then he attached the carrying poles to the ark, and he set the ark's cover, the place of atonement, on top of it. Then he brought the Ark of the Covenant into the tabernacle and hung the inner curtain to shield it from view, just as the Lord had commanded him. Next, Moses placed the table in the tabernacle along the north side of the holy place, just outside the inner curtain. And he arranged the bread of the presence on the table before the Lord, just as the Lord had commanded him. He set the lampstand in the tabernacle across from the table on the south side of the holy place. Then he lit the lamps in the Lord's presence, just as the Lord had commanded him. He also placed the gold incense altar in the tabernacle, in the holy place, in front of the inner curtain. On it he burned the fragrant incense, just as the Lord had commanded him. He hung the curtain at the entrance of the tabernacle, and he placed the altar of burnt offering near the tabernacle entrance. On it he offered a burnt offering and a grain offering, just as the Lord had commanded him. 
Next, Moses placed the wash basin between the tabernacle and the altar. He filled it with water so the priest could wash themselves. Moses and Aaron and Aaron's sons used water from it to wash their hands and feet. Whenever they approached the altar and entered the tabernacle, they washed themselves just as the Lord had commanded Moses. Then he hung the curtains, forming the courtyard around the tabernacle and the altar, and he set up the curtains at the entrance of the courtyard. So at last, Moses finished the work. Then the cloud covered the tabernacle, and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. Moses could no longer enter the tabernacle because the cloud had settled down over it, and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. Now whenever the cloud lifted from the tabernacle, the people of Israel would set out on their journey following it. But if the cloud did not rise, they remained where they, where they were until it lifted. The cloud of the Lord hovered over the tabernacle during the day, and at night fire glowed inside the cloud, so the whole family of Israel could see it. This continued throughout all their journeys. Guys, we did it! Read through all of Exodus. That's two books down now. 64 to go <laughs> thank you all so much to everybody who's been on this bible reading channel journey with me and fellowshipping with me as i read the entire bible um tomorrow at the time of me filming this tomorrow i will start leviticus i look forward to seeing you all there and as usual if you have a prayer request please drop that in the comments even if it is an unspoken request so myself my prayer team and anyone else who's looking through the comments can pray for you or your request so thank you again i will see you tomorrow bye